We're here Jordan with Mauer. Uh, Captain Meyer. Mauer. Mauer, excuse me, from uh, Patrick Air Force Base over uh, on the coast there. And uh, he's going to talk about the JAG, the U.S. Air Force JAG. Uh, on the 19th, we'll have the Army JAG here. So you can hear with both sides, and I'm working on the Navy as well as the Marines to come just to give you an overview of what the opportunities, even the Coast Guard, but they don't seem to. We've only even the Coast Guard. But anyway, but we welcome you. I'll turn this over to the captain. And feel free to eat your lunch and participate, OK? Thank you. Um, all right, so despite my uh, formal attire here, I really just want to do kind of an informal thing. Uh, so if you, if you mind if I sitting and I can see everyone all right, would you mind coming over here? Just, just in case you have questions or something like that. Them. Um, so just to get a sense of what uh, where you guys are in your law school careers, um, can I, do you mind if I ask you what, what year you are? One L. One L. Okay. I graduated in December. Okay, in December. So like three L. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And you? A one L. A one L. Okay. Um, so what I thought I would do. talk about our various programs for, for coming into the, the JAG Corps, just kind of a general overview. Um, I'll show you a couple of resources online that, you can, that are very helpful. Um, really, they're the resources that I used when I was applying and uh, uh, doing the interview process and all that. And then maybe just talk a little bit about why I thought the, the JAG Corps was a good fit for me, why, why I thought it made sense for me, and um, just some things to think about in uh, going through the application process. Um, and then I, I just want to mainly field any questions you might have about the uh, process. So just to begin with, um, the, the main uh, Accession process. Accession is just the term we have for uh, bringing people into the Air Force. So the main process is called the Direct Appointment Program, and that's for law school, the current students in law school. Uh, basically, the time frames uh, are that you apply while you're in law school after a year, two well a year. And um, you will be <coughs> considered uh, by a board. So basically, the whole the whole uh, the selection committee for Air Force Jacks is done is, is a board. We call it selection boards, and those boards meet uh, three times a year in uh, October, December, and April. So. The time frame for applying to those boards is after your after you finish your two L year. Um, that summer, you want to get started on uh, filling out your application, thinking about uh, writing a, a statement. So a big part of your application for the JAG board is a motivational statement, it's a statement as to why you are interested in becoming a JAG, why you think. Fit, um, and those are those are looked at uh, very closely by the, the board, the selection board. Um, so after you do all that, um, submit the application. You will schedule an interview with your uh, at your nearest uh, Air Force legal office. For us here, it's, it's my office at Patrick Air Force Base. It's about uh, 60 miles from here, 60 miles east uh, on the coast, uh, right by Cocoa Beach. So basically, you call in the office, uh, schedule an interview with the, the boss, uh, who's called the staff judge advocate. And um, at that time, uh, after you complete the interview, uh, 
the legal office will compile your application and give a recommendation based on your interview as to whether you should be, uh, whether you, you, th you think you're the right fit for the JAG board. And then um, the board meets, uh, like I said, in October. So for, for you guys right now, um, I guess you, you would be the only one eligible to, to apply as because uh, you have to complete two years of law school before you can start the application process. So I'm not too late then? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, we, we frequently get uh, practicing attorneys who apply uh, post law school, you know, even three or four years into their, their practicing career, they, they apply. The so, age yeah. limit is different than if you go enlisted. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so, what are um, I know each each uh, service does it differently, but it's uh, you can still commission up to um, age 35. So that's kind of the the cutoff for um, commissioning. And I, I think there there may be a waiver process, but as a rule of thumb, that's probably the um, probably the cutoff that you're going to look at. But yeah, it is, you know, um, you know practicing attorneys will frequently apply, come into the JAG board. We, we really like that because it's, it's uh, you get people with, who have experience you know, in various areas of law already coming in rather than just coming straight out of law school. Um, so, let's see. So let me just show you really quickly um, on this website how to, how to navigate. So this website, www.airforce.com slash careers, specialty careers, JAG. Uh, this has a uh, pretty much all the information that you need to know regarding the application process. And the entry programs is where you're going to want to you're going to want to look. Um, for you all, uh, student is obviously the applicable uh, category. Although, like I said, licensed attorneys very frequently come into the JAG board, and this kind of has an overview about time frames. So it has. Um, during law school, uh, just before graduation, and even before school, which yeah, I know is not applicable to, to you all. Um, so the direct appointment program is the one that I mentioned. That's, that's the most common program uh, for people to come in. It's, I, I would probably say like 75 to 80 percent of our JAGs are um, uh, direct appointees to this program. Uh, so this, our uh, application process is all online. Uh, and as you can see right here, I just, for the direct appointment program, it's got a little, uh, it's got a brief um, blurb about Instructions on applying, and then you can just access the online application straight from here. And it has pretty thorough instructions, and there are there are various um, documents that you need to gather as part of the uh, the application. So that's why I recommend you know, starting. Um, if you want to apply at your, at your first opportunity, you, you should start the, the summer before your 3L year. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I, I, I've asked everyone kind of what year they are in, in school. Um, which, what year are you? I'm a third year student. You're at 3L, okay. Cool. Well, um, we're just going through kind of the general uh, process for applying to the JAG board. Becoming a JAG. Um, yeah, so this this uh, this list here is important because 
it'll it'll tell you kind of some of the documents you need to gather in advance. Um, so let me get back to to the the time frames. So for for you, for example, and and you as as three L's, um, at this point. You you still have time to, to go in and uh, submit an application, gather all these documents. It has to be done because the board meets next month in October. The application has to be done by the I think this says the tenth. Yeah, September tenth. Uh, so it's got to get pretty close. Um, the entire application needs to be done September 10th? Yes, for for this um, upcoming board in October. Uh, There's so one after that, isn't it? Like there is, yeah, there are three. So that's, like I said, this one for, for this board, it's cutting it kind of close, but there are, there are two more opportunities for this um, fiscal year. The, the first is, uh, or the, the first, like I said, is October. Second one is going to be in December. So if you wanted to, I mean, if you if you haven't already begun this process, I would recommend you know, focusing on the December board and getting all your your documents together. Um, calling the, the over to Patrick Air Force Base to schedule an interview uh, with our SJA and. Um, Shooting, shooting really for for that that board, and then um, if you don't get picked up for that board, you can subsequently um, reapply. It's there's there's a more streamlined re, uh, application process that if you want to reapply, you don't have to um, start from scratch all over again. And that one, like I said, is in April. So realistically, realistically at this point. You're probably looking at applying to the December and April uh, boards, and so you want to get everything done for those boards uh, by the 10th of the, the month prior. So November 10th and March 10th uh, is when you want to have your application in. You want to have your interview scheduled with the, the SJA. The interview doesn't have to take place before the 10th uh, of the preceding month, but uh, it just has to be scheduled. Um, what other good information would be on this page? Um, let's just let see if I should flag any of these. Yeah, so you have to get all of your undergraduate transcripts. I know for me that was kind of a hassle, so that's something you want to work on early. Um, get your LSAT score, which that was also uh, a little bit cumbersome. And then, if is anyone prior military? So there, there are additional requirements for your prior military, uh, the DD form 214, OPR, DPRs, those, those sorts of things are also included in the, uh, the application process. Which, uh, which branch were you? Army National Guard, Florida. National Guard, okay, cool. Where's, uh, where's the nearest? Guard base. I was stationed in Miami and in Pinellas Park, in Miami with the 13th Army Band, and in Pinellas Park with the 53rd Infantry. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, and I mean, letters of recommendation, that's something that you, you kind of need to get on early. Um, and for, so for, that's kind of the, 
once you're ready to apply um, stuff. For the one else, it's um, one of the best things you can do now is look into uh, internships or externships. We do uh, we have uh, unpaid externships during the school year. Uh, I know we had a very university student two summers ago um, doing a, I, I think he was doing a paid internship because it was during the summer. So for the, the summer internships. Um, okay, well, I, I know we've had some of our students over in the drag during the summer. Yep, yep. Uh, Marcus. Yeah. This guy's name. He was, he was in our office 2015, summer 2015. Yeah, so, um, I mean, those, anything that you can do to uh, demonstrate your interest in the JAG Corps is, is going to be extremely helpful for you. Um, so, internships, um, you know, talking with as many with as many JAGs as you can. Uh, I know basically what what the JAG Corps, what the overall goal is, is to get people um, coming in, sort of knowing what they're getting into, and um, you know, being knowledgeable about what it is that we do as JAGs, and that 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 prevents people from, you know, it it, it helps both sides because then we don't get people in who are, you know, come in and they think, oh, what, what did I get myself into? And, and hate the job and because that's not a good situation for the Air Force or the applicant. So yeah, anything you can do to familiarize yourself uh, with uh, military life, military culture, uh, and then familiarize yourself with just the work that JAGs do. So I guess maybe that would be a good segue to uh, just a little information about me, about why I thought the JAG Corps was the right fit for me. Um, I went into law school really not knowing what I wanted to do afterwards. I didn't really have a, any resources, especially like family. I didn't have any family who had gone to law school. So I was I was really looking for you know to get to get exposed to as many fields as I possibly could to see what I liked. And after looking into the Jack Corps, I realized that that was something that Jack Corps could offer. We do a lot of different um, we practice in a lot of different areas. Uh, from uh, right now, I am the Chief of Labor and Environmental Law. Uh, so I do labor law for civilians. It's as, as, a, as a uniformed um, military member. It's something I never thought I would do, uh, but it's, it's interesting and it's a good experience for, um, uh, you know, even for like the outside. Some of what we do is, is really specialized. Um, mostly the uh, the operations law side of things, like uh, law of war stuff. But some of what we do is very applicable to the um, outside of the, the uh, military, like labor and environmental, uh, like contract law. That's a very big uh, field of practice for Air Force JAGs. Um, so anyway, that was that was. Uh, one of the biggest things that drew me to the JAG Corps, and I had a, uh, I had some familiarity with the Air Force, uh, but I didn't have family who had been in the military. So what I did was just, you know, seek out as much information as I possibly could. I, I did uh, internships with the Army during my one else summer. Air Force, two all summer. Uh, 
uh, all unpaid stuff. You know, it's just it's 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 barely competitive right now, and I knew that. So basically, I knew that I had to demonstrate that I was very seriously interested about Jack Um I mean, if if you're already uh, beyond that point, um, if you're already a three L. It's still it's it's not too late to um, to seek out those opportunities and to educate yourself about becoming a jack because uh, as I mentioned earlier we do have uh, a lot of um, practicing attorneys coming into the jack corps so you don't have to be a student uh, to apply or the only limit is uh, there's an age limit to commission and in the Air Force and that's 35. Um, but so, after doing those internships, uh, those kind of led to uh, good recommendation letters from the bosses I worked for in the summers, and I think that's really what um, really helped me get selected. And that's you know that's as it should be. I like the job. I like the. I knew what what Jags did, and um, you know that's that's the situation that, that's best for all everybody involved. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you this page. We have a Facebook page, which is extremely informative. Right now, our chief of recruiting is going through uh, uh, application tips. I think she's doing it like weekly. She's, she's posting these application tips. So for example, this one is uh, her um, uh, JAG photo. So basically, as part of the application, you have to do a full length photograph and uh, you know, some people send in extremely unprofessional photographs, like just something they pulled off Facebook, and that really can kill an application. So, you know, this is just one of the things that she's she's like, you know, don't don't do and do for the for the application photo um, and letters of recommendation. You know, just one. Um, going through all of the kind of frequently asked questions that people have about applying for the JAG board. So that's very, that's another invaluable resource. I would say between this, this Facebook page and um, this uh, JAG, Air Force JAG recruiting page, uh, pretty much all of your questions be answered using these resources. Uh, for for the normal applicant, uh, for some for those in unusual situations, there we, we definitely have no problem um, fielding questions, taking phone calls. I'll leave my uh, um, I don't have a card, but I'll leave my uh, leave phone number and email address. Sure. So you can get in contact with me, um, and I can send follow-up materials. We have we have a, a lot of a lot of materials that 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 uh, give you a lot of information, and you know, I, instead of inundate you with with all of those, uh, if you are serious about wanting to apply or to, to submit a good application package. Any additional information uh, that would be helpful for you. Um, I guess maybe I can finish up with just kind of explaining what I do now. I mentioned I'm the chief of labor and environmental law, but um, just kind of talk about what that means, and then I'll turn it over to you guys if you have any questions. Uh, 
So as Chief of Labor and Environmental Law, I am the, late, the top labor lawyer for our base. Actually, I think I'm the only labor lawyer for our base. Um, and uh, what that means is I work closely with our um, labor relations office to uh, help managers and supervisors navigate the world of, of human resources. When, if it comes to you know, disciplining employees, um, firing people, uh, unique situations where the labor union on base is involved. All of those kind of um, situations that deal with civilians, uh, I I am the legal advisor for. So um, that's the labor law side of my job. Um, and just kind of as a background uh, framework, the, the base <coughs> is kind of like a, a mixture. The base legal office is the legal office that services that little city, which is the base. The base is, is like a city with the commander of the base being the mayor. Um, so we, we do, we prosecute crimes. It's kind of like a district attorney function. We um, uh, we advise on various um, like land use or environmental type issues as sort of like um, as a city attorney type function. And then we also uh, advise on contract issues or like I said, labor law. Uh, and that's more of like a, if you think of the base as, as also like a corporation, we kind of serve as the general counsel uh, for the corporation to advise them you know, uh, on various uh, contract labor type issues that come up. So for the environmental piece of my job, um, essentially I don't have any environmental law background. Uh, so a lot of what I do is consult with our our experts. We have, if you stay in uh, the JAG Corps, um, I think probably over like five or six years, you will have the opportunity to go get an advanced degree in environmental law, uh, uh, an LLM, environmental law, contract law, you know, national security law. There are a lot of avenues open for Air Force JAGs. Um, but so those folks who go and get an environmental a master's in environmental law. They, uh, they're they're sort of our subject matter experts, and we at the base legal office are constantly um, consulting with them as environmental issues come up. So you know we get complaints from citizens in, uh, around our base, uh, in the cities around our base. Um, you know, concerned about about something uh, that the base is doing environmentally, or we get um, we have to go through the uh, the whole um, uh, environmental uh, National Environmental Protection Act process, which says that you know anytime you want to build something, you have to examine what environmental impact that construction is. Those are the types of things that I help our um, our uh, units around base with uh, on the environmental side. In addition to you know accidents, uh, spills, stuff like that. Um, so, what are the benefits of being part of the military, and as far as your school payback and oh yeah. Things? We have, uh, I don't think everybody got these, but we have some literature. Take a look. That's uh, 
currently we offer uh, student loan repayment, um, and that's just that's a um, there's no additional commitment for being eligible for that. So if you get selected and come into the JAG Corps, um, they will pay up to sixty-five thousand dollars of your student loans, and uh, it's just a once you're in. It's it's a it's a simple application process, but there's no you're, you're as long as you um, as long as you request the uh, the student loan repayment, it's it's payable. They'll they'll pay off um, up to sixty five thousand dollars of your student loans, which is very nice. I I've only been in a year and a half, and I just got my first student loan repayment. Disbursement, and which is very nice. The uh, some of the other benefits um, I mentioned, uh, you know, going and getting uh, further education. So getting an LLM in a specialty uh, like environmental or contracts, uh, the Air Force. If, if you get selected for one of those programs, uh, they'll pay for everything, and they'll actually pay you to go to school. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool setup. Uh, but for that, you will be, uh, you will incur additional uh, years of service. So you know, they, they'll pay for school, but you have to compensate them by committing for extra years. Uh, That's it for education benefits, but for just in terms of other kind of the, the benefits of being in the military, um, you get basically almost half of your pay. Essentially, uh, your your base pay is tax free, um, which is extremely beneficial. So one of the things that, that people uh, that may that may make the uh, the JAG if you're looking at comparing salaries that may look make the JAG salary look lower is if you uh, is if you only look at the base salary but for military members uh, they give you a housing allowance in addition to your base salary, and that housing allowance, uh, for most people, for me at least, and I think for for most people, um, makes up about uh, half of your your paycheck every month, and that's all tax free. So that's just kind of one of the one of the benefits of just being in the military generally. Um, that that people often. Have Additionally, you have benefits of, for like shopping at the the on base grocery stores, the, the commissaries. It's all uh, tax free items. It's it's kind of a, a standard monetary perk, as well as extremely good health care coverage. Um, I mean, this that's all in on this web page. You can just check out benefits. And I would just say, um, from a uh, comparative perspective, like being a JAG is, is very, uh, it's much different from um, it's it's different from a normal attorney track. Like you're you're much more your hours are very um, set. You're, it's going to be pretty much a nine-to-five type job, government job. Very uh, generous time off. It's 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 a good. Um, it gives you a really good work-life balance, more so than other careers uh, in the law do. Um, yeah. 
this has... The physical this has, requirements. Pardon me? The physical requirements. Yes, so our... Um, our fitness test is a uh, for all uh, uh, Air Force personnel is a one and a half mile run um, and a push ups and sit ups assessment. And then there's like a, a waist measurement component. So there's a think, there's a chart that kind of says where you need to be. of those components. Basically, yeah, that is, that is a, a requirement. So you have to complete a 1.5 mile run, uh, attain a certain number of push-ups in a minute, a certain number of sit-ups in a minute, and you have to be within the, the waist circumference um, standards. Um, good question. Any any other questions? Yeah, I had a no running profile uh, toward the end of my contract in the Army. Okay. And they had me do a two and a half mile walk instead of a two mile run. Okay. Would I be able to do something similar to Jag or if not, I'll just strap up the knees and I'll, I mean, one and a half miles, I'll do it. Yeah, I think, um, so that would probably be assessed at the, um, the MEPS. I don't know, being prior military, I don't know how the medical processing works, um, but I think that that you, uh, once you go through the, the medical screening process at the, the MEPS Center, and I can't remember what MEPS stands for, but that's just the, the, um, the place you go to get medically cleared before coming into the military. But I would say that, uh, if you could get a waiver for something like that, that's that's where you would um, that's that's where you work through to, to get the waiver. Um, and I, for your situation, it's so unique because you you have prior service, and I don't know how that factors into their calculation of do um, accomplishing the fitness standard. go to JAG school? We do, yeah. We have a uh, nine-week course. Uh, we call it JSOC, Judge Advocate Staff Officer course. It's basically a crash course in all the stuff that you didn't learn in law school about military law, which is, for most law schools, it's pretty much nothing. Like, you know, most law schools don't have, you know, military justice courses or um, military operational law courses, law of armed conflict. So where is uh, that course now? Pardon me? Where is that course now? That where is it? Yeah. It's at uh, uh, Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery, Alabama. So Maxwell Air Force Base is kind of the hub of officer training for the Air Force, and um, it just so happens that our JAG school, the legal training, is also right there. So basically, well, what I did is, is I did both courses back to back and spent um, did my initial officer training at Maxwell for five weeks that um, legal training for another nine 
um, what's called co-location preference. So, yeah, you will um, you will definitely want to when going through the assignments process, um, figuring out where they're going, where you're going to get placed. Uh, tell them, put it on their radar that you have a spouse in the Air Force and that um, you'd like to seek co-location preference. Yeah, we, there are a lot of JAGs who uh, are married to other JAGs. Uh, I would say, I know of like two or three, and they're all co-located, so anecdotally. <laughs> Those are good odds. <laughs>